I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode, we'll be talking about creating style guides, writing interface copy, ratchet, and more. Let's check it out. First up is an article from a list apart called Creating Style Guides. Now, now first, a style guide is basically how you want to dress, right? Not quite. A style guide is basically a living document of code. So it's a place where you can put all of the elements and modules and visual pieces of your application as it is described in your HTML and CSS. So famously, Starbucks has made their uh, style guide available for anybody to look at. So this is what their style guide looks like for all of their web properties. Uh, you should use a style guide to make sure that all of your code is in sync. So everybody is on the same page and everybody's making something that's very consistent with one another and they're not going off and creating their own uh, components if something is already created. So it helps with the reusability of code. If we scroll down a little further here, they go into how to build your own style guide, and they first suggest going with just the basics, so things like typography, how your grid system works, how the color palette should look, and so on. And then after you've built that out, you can start to add in components, so things like content cards or buttons or things that have multiple pieces of markup and need to be put together. Yeah, this is great even for somebody newly joining your project. You know, if they don't know how to use a certain element or even what colors to use, they can always just refer to the style guide to see how to do specific implementations of something, right? Exactly. So a style guide basically just makes your site a lot more maintainable and makes it much easier to work on a team together. So putting together that documentation can help a lot, especially on large projects. Nick and I actually have a style guide for our hair, but we're not going to link to that publicly. Uh, speaking of style guides, once you've written your style guide, it'd be great to have good interface copy on your site. And that's the next article we're talking about. This is a blog post from Google Ventures called Five Rules for Writing Great Interface Copy. Now, uh, as you might expect, there are five rules inside here about writing interface copy. The first one, clarity is king. Some people say short is best and some people say longer is better. Some people say that people only scan text on the web and that they don't read. That's true. I didn't even read this article. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so anyway, the author makes a bunch of great points um, on what to watch out for when you are writing copy for your web page. Like one, be specific. Don't say search when you mean filter. Save is not the same as submit. Uh, something that people typically strive for a lot is having a site with a lot of personality. And the author says that personality doesn't matter as much as you think. Instead of trying to stand out, actually just write more effective copy and your personality will shine through that way. Uh, number three, just tell me. Uh, really describe what's going on as simply as you possibly can. Number four, by the way people do read, that is false. Number five, writing is part of the design process. That's probably the biggest takeaway from this article. Most people think of writing and copy as one of the last parts of creating a website or even a web application. And writing is something that should be done throughout the process of design because the author says that writing is actually design. Uh, when you look at the visual design of a web page, that is just one part of it. Copy is another part of design. Anyway. This article is actually great, and I did read it. You can find a link to it in the show notes, which you can get to at youtube.com slash go treehouse, or search for us in iTunes, we are the Treehouse Show. And drop us a rating while you're there. You know, that is uh, really good advice, dropping us a rating, but also considering copy as part of the design process. Uh, basically, I always will put in real copy as often as I can instead of like placeholder text or lorem ipsum text because sometimes something is going to end up being a lot longer than you think it is or it might be shorter and you know it's a good way to figure out how things should actually look as well as read on your site. That is actually one thing the author says is do not use lorem ipsum text when designing the site. Uh, the writing and copy of your site or app will evolve as the design does. Good tip. 
Well, next up is a new mobile framework called Ratchet. This is a front-end framework from the same people that brought you the Bootstrap framework, which is much more popular. But this is just hitting version 2.0. It hit 2.0 around February, and they've been maintaining it uh, pretty consistently. It's in version 2.0.2 as of this recording. And let's take a look at some of the components. So this is, like I said, a front-end framework for building mobile websites. Now, it's for building mobile-only websites, so these won't actually work on desktop devices. So this is maybe useful for a very specific instance where you want to create a separate mobile site from your desktop site. Now, as you can see, the styling is very similar to what you might find on a native mobile app. So they have this base styling, they have iOS styling, and then they have Android styling. So you can use all of the same components here and then just use a different style sheet and it will automatically restyle it. So if we scroll down a little further here, we can look at some of the various components. It has everything you'd expect, including table views, uh, button bars, badges, and that sort of thing. Scroll down a little further here. They have some really nice toggles here that look very close to their native equivalents. Switch over to Android here so you can see what that looks like. But in general, it's pretty cool. I played around with it a little bit myself uh, fairly recently, and it's very easy to use. To go from one page to another, it does rely on Push.js, so you will need to be running a local web server uh, when doing development with Ratchet. So even though it's just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, you can't just download it and expect it to work immediately. You have to be running a server. The other thing to keep in mind with Ratchet is that you also have to enable touch events if you're expecting it to work in a normal desktop browser like Chrome or Firefox. What I actually did when I was playing around with it is I just used the iOS simulator that comes with Xcode on Mac OS X. But uh, it's pretty great. It, like I said, it just hit version 2.0, which was a complete rewrite. So at this point, it's starting to get fairly mature. And I think it's worth checking out if you're maybe wanting to just prototype a native app. This would be a really good thing to, to go to and use. Oh, very cool. Next up, we have a project called elementtransitions.js. You may remember an article on Code Drops we covered a little while ago on the same element transitions. Well, this is now a JavaScript library that lets you use them in your web pages. Now, look at all these transitions we have here. If you can focus on one just for a second, you see, hey, look, we've got a rotate slide in and also a rotate slide out. Um, so these are actually extremely easy to use. They're also very performant because they are using CSS3 transitions. Now, if we scroll down and get through all of this while being able to focus, we can see the examples right here. So if we want to rotate an element on a click, wow, look at that. Element one rotates out and element two comes in. Amazing. Isn't it? And this is all it takes right here to get that to work. Now, you can also add in different classes for these transitions. So we can see that the uh, div class is an element transition wrapper. And then the button applies certain different transitions. Now, where is the standalone example? It is 404ing right now. But uh, I promise it is extremely easy to use. You just include jQuery, include the element transition CSS, uh, and also the JavaScript. And then you can do it by applying classes to the existing markup or toggling them through JavaScript code. Anyway, great project. Definitely check it out. Very cool stuff. Well, next up is Magic Effects. I believe this is called Magic CSS, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, basically, it is a bunch of transitions and animations. Are we in space? That you can apply to different elements on your website. And yes, Jason, it does look like we're in space. I think they're using a full screen HTML5 video wow. on the background. Yeah, pretty it, pretty cool. I would say it's magical. Yeah, it's almost more interesting than this actual framework, but you know, <laughs> but that's cool. Anyway, you can make things puff in and puff out. You can Make things go to the left and right, just like that. There's a couple of different static effects here. There's some perspective effects. So those will actually transform in 3D space. That's pretty cool. You can 
slide a few of these. So if you want to maybe reveal something, you can do something like that. Oh, I feel like most of goes. the names of these effects could also be dance moves. I, I think that's where the inspiration for this comes from, Jason. Yeah. Dance moves. You want a tin ride out? Can we see that, Nick? Let's do it. There it goes. <laughs> tin ride out. Uh, if we go over to the GitHub page, uh, you can see that it's just uh, some CSS here. And to add it to your site, you just include the CSS file. So that's pretty straightforward. They also have a minified version if you prefer that. And if you want to use it with jQuery, you can actually just add and remove classes just like that. So, oh, actually, you have to use it with jQuery. Uh, so this is what uh, that would look like. So you just add and remove the classes, or you can toggle classes if you want to have an effect appear and then go away. And you can also adjust the timing. So the default timing is set for you, but you can go ahead and change that if you want to. Anyway, not a whole lot to say about it, but uh, I thought the effects were pretty cool, so just wanted to point that out. Hmm. Well, I'm just going to tin right into our next article right here, which is a GitHub cheat sheet by Tim Green on GitHub. And as you might expect from the name, this is a cheat sheet for working with GitHub. They say it's a collection of cool hidden and not so hidden features of both Git and GitHub. Now, we're not going to go over everything because there is so much stuff here. Look look at all this. Just look at this table of contents. Um, but you might not have known that if you add this, this little query string right here, w equals 1, to any URL on GitHub, it will ignore the white space to see only the code that has changed. Isn't that cool? Uh, anyway, it lets you do just a ton of stuff. I didn't even know that you could do some of the things in this article. Uh, like I said, so much going on here. Even if you've been working with Git and GitHub for a while, I guarantee you will pick something up in this cheat sheet. So check it out. We'll have a link in the show notes. Very cool stuff. Well, next up is a blog post from John Resig on his personal website called Write Code every day. And this is actually a pretty timely article for me personally because this is something I'm also trying to do uh, to improve my coding habits. So John Resig is the author of jQuery, right? That is correct, Jason. Thank you for pointing that out. Uh, so John Resig set up a couple of rules for himself. He said, I must write code every day. I can write docs or blog posts and other things. But in addition to that, I must write code. Uh, he also wants to make sure he's writing useful code, so just, you know, making sure he doesn't do any just tweaking or reformatting or things like that. It has to actually do something. The code must be written before midnight, and it must be open source and up on GitHub. So he's been doing this for 20 consecutive weeks now, and you can see his GitHub history. That's pretty impressive there. But I think one of the things that I'd like to highlight that came out of this is that he said, it used to be that getting work done on weekends was totally critical to any kind of forward momentum on his own side projects. And that's pretty tough, especially when you're working on something like jQuery or you know, other frameworks that, uh, that John has been working on. So you know, side projects are really super important to progressing your career and progressing your skills. So that's why I think this article is so great. It tells you exactly how to maintain those side projects and keep the momentum going, which can be tough. WCED, write code every day. Next up, we have a project called viz.js. This is a visual interaction system, a, a dynamic browser-based visualization library. So what does this let you do? Well, let's just take a look at a examples gallery that they have on the site that is in GitHub, and we can't access it right at the moment. And uh, let me go back here, because <laughs> it launched in a new page. OK, let's take a look at the timeline here. This is something that was generated completely programmatically. And as you can see, you can scroll down, put different items in here. And then if we go back, there is just a ton of different things you can do. Here's this example that has, quote, much data. So you see that it's got 100 items in here. Uh, very performantly, we can add in another couple zeros worth, hit draw, and if we wait just a moment, all those things will load on to the end of the page right here. I'm not going to make a scroll through all 10,000 of them. No, let's do it right now. We'll just, we'll just trust us that we're there. Uh, so you can also do graphs here. 
Um, basic usage graph right here, just a few nodes. Uh, anyway, ton of different options that you can do. Uh, very extensive documentation, walking through the different data sets and views that you need to do. Uh, you can install this via NPM or Bower, and as you can see, it is extremely easy to use. So if you need any visualizations in your site, go ahead and check out this project. Very cool stuff. Well, I am at Nick RP on Twitter. And I am at Jay Cypher. For more information on anything we talked about, check out the show notes that you can get to at youtube.com slash go treehouse or search for us on iTunes. We are the Treehouse Show. And of course, if you'd like to see more videos like this one about web design, web development, mobile, business, and so much more, be sure to check us out at teamtreehouse.com. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next week.